Biden administration is guilty of the largest human trafficking operation. Just remember, as soon as I take the oath of office, I'll terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration and begin the largest <laughs> deportation operation in American history. People who apply, who use the system, and they follow the rules, which I think Americans think we should. They apply for a green card. What percentage of them get it? That's 3%, so 97% do not get one. 3%. We shouldn't be blaming people seeking a better life. We ought to be willing to look in the mirror in this body, in the Capitol, and take responsibility for our failure to update the immigration system and to create an orderly way to boost our economy. Yes, it does seem like it's a weekly occurrence where Katie Porter puts Republicans firmly in their place over whatever issue they are outraged over while doing backflips to actually avoid addressing said issue. This is a really important point for the American people to understand and really important for Democrats to stake out here. What is our position on immigration? And it is that immigration is a huge benefit to our economy from which we all benefit. Last week saw Republicans have the opportunity to question Hunter Biden in public, but then they would risk the American public witnessing how little evidence they have. So they opted to not and just fake more outrage instead. So that Americans who love this country and just want a better future don't have to listen to hours of frustrating attacks and procedural debates in a partisan game. Let me sum it up. One, there is zero evidence of President Biden doing anything wrong, including in connection with his son. No evidence of an impeachable offense. Not a little, not something, none. Two, Hunter Biden has offered to testify in public in front of this committee. If Republicans only want his secret private testimony, that is, as the kids say this these days, Sus. And this week, it's a new issue, but same playbook. Republicans are threatening a government shutdown over the border while simultaneously refusing to work with Democrats to pass a bill helping to address issue on said border. Other than joining Democrats and Biden in good faith, bipartisan negotiations to make progress on immigration, they are taking orders from Donald Trump and actively obstructing a bipartisan border deal. Just as Trump is openly hoping for an economic downturn in our robust low unemployment economy, they're hoping for chaos at the border and trying to stop us from preventing it. Why, you ask? Well, because you can't fearmonger over resolutions, can you? Well, Katie Porter wasn't willing to sit idly by while her Republican counterparts pretended to be outraged or while echoing Trump's rhetoric pulled verbatim from Mein Kampf. Looking forward to the next administration where we're going to have the largest deportation system that's ever been witnessed in human history. And she let them know, well, what was up. Of the people who apply, who use the system, and they follow the rules, which I think Americans think we should, they apply for a green card. What percentage of them get it? That's 3%, so 97% do not get one. 3%. I hear all the time from people that they would like people who want to seek a life in this country to follow the rules and quote, get in line. But if you, there is no line at all for many, many countries. Can you explain that? Right, so some countries, you know, you can apply for the lottery, right? You know, if you're from a country without a large legal immigration flow already to the United States, but for many countries, where the, Mexico, India, China, uh, 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 Central American countries, uh, Venezuela now, they're banned from even applying for that, that green card lottery. So there's no direct path for them. If they don't have a U.S. citizen family member in the United States, they're out of luck unless they are extremely highly skilled uh, individual, you know, PhD, master's degree in STEM, uh, has a chance, you know, again, through the H-1B lottery. So we got lotteries on top of lotteries, even for the highest skilled people. So I think this is a really important point for the American people to understand and really important for Democrats to stake out here. What is our position on immigration? And it is that immigration is a huge benefit to our economy from which we all benefit. 
whether we are generations past from coming to this country or new immigrants, everyone, every American benefits from a strong, stable, globally competitive economy, and we have to have legal immigration to get there. That's platform one, in my view. The second platform is we want people to follow the rules, to, to have an orderly system. But we have to be honest, despite the efforts of the Biden administration, there is still, because Congress has failed, Republicans and Democrats have failed our economy and the American people because we have not created an orderly system. You cannot wait in line if there is no line. You cannot take your turn if we don't provide an, an, a chance to get to the front, to get a chance to apply. So the fundamental problem here is we have a broken immigration system. And what we're seeing in terms of unlawful immigration we shouldn't be blaming people seeking a better life. We ought to be willing to look in the mirror in this body, in the Capitol, and take responsibility for our failure to update the immigration system and to create an orderly way to boost our economy. Now, as a proud immigrant who had the resources that most don't to go through lawyers and months of litigation, screenings, etc., to obtain status in this country, nothing amuses me more than when I hear conservatives talk about just go through the right way. Like it's a self-checkout at Target. As someone who did go through those specific channels, let me tell you, aside from the thousands of dollars that it costs, it is by no means an easy process, especially when you consider the economic situation of countless families seeking asylum and a better life for their children. But when you subscribe to the Great Replacement Theory, peddled on the likes of Fox News, that adds up to 1.8 million illegal aliens that this Senate so-called border deal would let into the country. Uh, the problem in the Senate is the leadership. It comes from Mitch McConnell and those that, are, that hold the power over there. They've been the best, best possible senators for Joe Biden that you could ever expect to see out there. And I'm, I'm proud that Mike Lee and others in the Senate, Tommy Tuberville, J.D. Vance and others are saying there is no way they would ever vote for this thing. So I hope they stand strong over there. And we in the House, we aren't going for it. And if any of our Republican colleagues want to cross the line and sign a discharge petition and vote with the Democrats on that, well, good luck in their primary elections mm. and good luck getting reelected. And of course, they're not going to approach this debate with any slither of empathy. Hell, they don't even see migrants as people. See Greg Abbott turning the Rio Grande into his very own Squid Games, for example. Anything other than obstruction and cruelty. Just take a look at my governor last week. He said, and I quote, the only thing we're not doing is we're not shooting people who come across the border because, of course, the Biden administration would charge us with murder. I know Governor Abbott doesn't understand the law, but let me say this, that absolutely would be murder. Republicans would rather roll back child labor laws and put 11 year olds to work than come to the table to discuss making it easier for those who are willing to work the rigorous labor jobs every day, jobs that the majority of Americans blatantly refuse to do. Now, what we have here is that there are even some lawmakers in states like Wisconsin, Ohio, and Iowa that are proposing the loosening of child labor laws in their state because they have so many jobs that are left unfulfilled. We have seen teenagers dying in states like Wisconsin, Missouri, and Michigan, because so many jobs are going unfilled, and many of these Republican legislatures would rather roll back child labor laws and put 11 and 13 year olds back in the workplace that allow immigrants into their community and do what they've always done. Because all they care about is a political message it sends. If they dare say help black and brown people, how can they fear monger about them poisoning the blood? It can come to an end if the Biden administration will do its job and they've refused to do it, they're doing the opposite. So the 14 billion, um, there are, you're right, 1,600 asylum officers that would be part of that to speed up processing of asylum claims. That's what you're talking about. Um, but there also would be 1,300 more uh, Border Patrol agents to work alongside the, the 20,200. Uh, and also funding to hire 1,000 Custom and Border Prote Protection officers with a focus on counter fentanyl. So it's not all, in fact, most of it is not related to uh, 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 processing asylum seekers. A, a lot of it has to do with what you're talking about. 
Jake, the president should come to the border. It, what, a, what an idea that would be. He should talk to the border patrol agents year, who are you know. down here. I the think morale he went last year, low. just FYI. Yeah, yeah, well. From a sociological standpoint, I'd argue that the ugliest facets of American discourse rears its head more so with immigration than any other topic. Republicans, they know this, hence why they play on the fears that they instill in their voters and lie freely about alleged terrorists coming across the southern border, despite the fact that the FBI terror database shows matches are more common along the border separating the US and Canada, despite much lower levels of unauthorized migration there. Hmm. What's the difference between the North and South again? This is human trafficking. I just traveled in airports across the country just the past few days. You know what I saw in our airports? Migrants, illegal aliens. Being these children from their quote unquote parents. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.